Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a-fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth, and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh, and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren, that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifieth of these things, and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. The end of the Gospel according to St. John. The Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, 
Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about an hundred and twenty, Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us, and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, Aseldama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. Wherefore, of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, Show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. In Jesus' name. Today is a uh, wonderful hybrid service. It's going to be special today. Praise God. I know the choristers are coming in a moment to minister to us, but I would like for us to understand that, uh, or to know that uh, as we are here, we have uh, people connected from all over the region. All over the region, uh, the churches represented in our regions will be connecting with us from 11 a.m. and uh, we're going to be listening to the region of Asia all the way from Philippines. So he's going to be addressing us this morning as a church. Can somebody praise the Lord? Are you excited to? Are you excited for that? Are you excited about that? So you praise the Lord. I praise. I said praise the Lord. If you're excited, yeah. Amen. And not just like I said, the body of believers all over the region connected with us, and so. This morning, uh, I believe the Lord has, you know, great things to do in our lives. There is going to messages coming to us, but uh, we're going to project him on the big screen, and it's life. It's not recorded. It's life. So, you're just going to act like he's right here, standing here, ministering to us. And so, I want you, I pray you connect in the spirit as you connect there will be a miracle in your life in Jesus' name. I said there will be a miracle in your life in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Praise God. The choir can come up. Recording stopped. Recording in progress.
Praise the Lord. For those of us in the house here, praise the Lord. Can we listen to the organist again? And let's do a better job.
Let us pray. Precious Father, glorious Lord, eternal God, everlasting King, ancient of days, King of glory, we thank you. We bless and glorify you for the life you have given us. We thank and adore you because of the opportunity and the privilege to live for you and to showcase your glory. Father, thank you for all your children in different parts of the nation as we are all connected together, one with another and connected with you. Speak to us now and bless us through the power of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to appreciate you all for making our time to be part of the combined service today. And I believe that the power of the word will bless you, will increase you and multiply all that are yours in Jesus' name. Today, I'll be talking on prosperity through sacrificial giving. There is something we have discovered in our church that quite a lot of people are not where they're supposed to be spiritually. They are not where they're supposed to be financially. They're not where they're supposed to be materially. They are not supposed, they are not where they're supposed to be socially because we have not done our job effectively teaching us about giving. And as such, many of us globally, deeper life Bible church members, have become so stingy and have almost seen giving as a sin. Unfortunately, it is what you believe God for that God will do for you. If you believe the word of God that when you sow, you will reap, definitely you will reap. And I want to say that even though many of us are in that category, there are a selected few, a few people that have distinguished themselves, separated themselves, and decided to do something different from the norm. I pray that you will be different, you'll be distinguished in Jesus' name. People like that are blessed. People like that are increasing. People like that are progressing. People like that are succeeding in all that they lay their hands upon to do. They are blessings unto their generation. Prosperity through sacrificial giving. If you note, I didn't say prosperity through giving. There are giving and there are givings. I'm talking about giving sacrificially. Let's turn our Bible very quickly to the book of John, chapter 12. I look at it from verses 1 through to 8. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, a matter served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment, a spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with odor of the ointment, the perfume. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon, uh, Simon's son, we should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my bearing, had she kept this? For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. As we see from the passage here, shortly before Jesus went to the cross, there was a woman who was grateful for the goodness of God in her life, the goodness of God in her family. Her brother Lazarus died in chapter 11, and Jesus rose him from the dead. Now she saw an opportunity to show her appreciation to God in the deep outer expression of the inward astonishment she felt for Jesus. Mary of Bethany, Mary of Alabasabot, pour an expensive oil perfume on the Lord Jesus that was worth a full year's wages. That means if you take your wages for a whole year, 
put everything together. That was exactly the cause of the ointment, the perfume that Mary of Bethany poured on Jesus Christ. That simple action and her, and her eternal recognition. When you come to Matthew chapter 26, as a matter of fact, you will see the record of Mary in all the Gospels. You see it in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, and then in John. Come with me to Matthew chapter 26, verses 12 and 13. For in that, in that she had poured his disappointment on my body. I take it again. In that she had poured disappointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman had done be told for a memorial of her. And I have the good news for you. We are now in the a, a new century. Far from the time of Jesus, we are still talking about the woman. We are still celebrating her life. I pray that heaven will celebrate you. And your generation and generations to come will celebrate you as well in Jesus' name. First Chronicles chapter 21. I look at verses 22 to 26. First Chronicles chapter 21, verses 22 to 26. Then David said to Ornan, grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it to me for the full price. Note that for the full price. Anytime you try to do anything for the Lord, for the full price, that a plague may be saved from the people. And honor said unto David, take it to thee, and let my Lord, the king, do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give it thee, the oxen also, for bond offering, and the threshing floor, and the threshing instrument for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering, I give it all. Before I continue, look at honor. David only asked for one thing. Honor decided to go over and beyond the call of duty. The demand and the request from David, and uh, instead of just the treasure floor, David decided to give everything that will be needed for the sacrifice. And I pray that God will give us the spirit and the heart of giving in Jesus' name. Verse 24, and King David said to honor, nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price. For I will not take that which is dying for the Lord, nor offer burnt offering without cost. So David gave to honor for a place, 600 shekels of gold by weight. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offer burnt offering and peace offering, and call upon the name of the Lord, and answer him, uh, and he answer him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. Look at it, look at the scenario here. Onan was ready to give it all. David was ready to give it all. God was ready to give it all. When you give your all to God, God will give his all unto you. When you make a sacrifice, when you, give, when, when you give sacrificially, be rest assured that the blessings of the Lord is coming upon you. Your prayers will be answered in Jesus' name. You can see here that in order for the miracle of stopping the plague to happen, David needed to give an offering unto the Lord. He needed to make a sacrifice unto the Lord. When we talk about sacrifice, it is something that costs you something. It is something that is expensive. It is something that is not just a wishy-washy thing. Giving is a life and the nature of God. He gave the world life and hope at creation. He gave his time and treasure to humanity. All things created were for the good of humanity. He made all things good for our sake. In the beginning, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth, of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of water. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. I declare and decree into your life that from today, the light of the blessings of the Lord will come upon you in Jesus' name. And uh, when sin came in, a man was doomed for destruction. 
Jesus, uh, God gave his only begotten son, who is our redeemer, our savior. For all those that claim to belong to God, we must possess this nature of giving and be like our heavenly father. First John chapter one, verses six to seven. First John chapter one, verses six to seven. If we say, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ's son cleanses us from all sin, all sin. Come with me to the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye me, with that it shall be measured unto you again. Don't just be one of those that we, that has memorized this passage of the scripture, quoting it from time to time, but doing nothing about it. Be a doer of the world, and you will be a partaker of the blessing in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 to 26. Proverbs 11, verse 24. There is that scattered and yet increases, and there is that we told that more than is meet, but it tended to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that we told that come, the people shall cause him. They will not be under cause in Jesus' name. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. So as we come together today to look at the message prosperity through sacrificial giving, I need to let you know from the very beginning that there is a need from the church. There is a call from the church, and we are the church. So from the leadership of the church, because of a major, major need. And the work of the Lord in the church can be done by the people of the, in, in the church. And you are the people, we are the people, you and I are the one that God has positioned in this place at a time like this to be, the, uh, to be God's uh, battle act. And I pray you will not fail God. You will not fail your generation. You will not fail the church, and you will not fail yourself in Jesus' name. We are going to look at the call to prosperity through sacrificial giving. We are going to look at the causes of prosperity through sacrificial giving. We look at the cases, the condition, as well as the confinement of prosperity through sacrificial giving. The first point, the call. This is a call to you, it's a call to me. It is a call to all of us together. A call to be blessed, a call to be prospered, a call to be multiplied, a call to live long, a call to be a blessing to our generation. When God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, we saw that God has spoken to him. And now Abraham is now in compliance to the call of God, the will of God, the word of God. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, the call to prosperity. God is calling you. But he didn't, he won't just say, I'm calling to prosperity. He's going to give you an instruction, and your obedience to that instruction is going to be obedience of blessings, of prosperity, of wealth into your life in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And indeed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That comes through obedience. Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. And in thy sea shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Can you see? It's all about obedience, not just about head knowledge, not just about talking about it, not just about quoting the scripture, but complete obedience, perfect, perfect obedience to the word of the Lord, to the command of the Lord, to the call of God. God needs you at a time like this. God needs me. He needs all of us together, irrespective of your status, for as long as you breathe, air in and uh, air out. For as long as you have a place you can lay your head, head uh, on. For as long as you eat on daily basis, God is calling you, no matter what you can do, 
Don't say, I don't have money. Even in the little you have, you can give to the Lord. Don't say, well, I have this reserve for something. It is because God has given you the grace to make that wealth uh, that you are able Yeah, praise the Lord. Yes, it's because God has made it possible for you. That is why you are able to do all that you are doing. And the Lord will help you. The Lord will help me. The Lord will help all of us together so that we can be our best to the glory of the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. But look at something here, that chapter 22. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed in thy seed. Look at it, through your own obedience to God, there is a generational blessing. You become a, a conduit of blessing in the life of your children, of your grandchildren, of your great-grandchildren, and all your extended family members in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 28, verse 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. I need an amen there. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east to the north and to the south, and in thee, in me, in you, in all of us together, and in our seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. It is sounding, amen, amen. Through simple obedience to God, Abraham became father of many generations, and of course, a generational blessing. Most people fail to live up to their full potential because of their ignorance, of the plan and the purpose of God for their lives. They are ignorant of the divine interconnectivity between them and their blessing. Opportunity always knock at our door to be a blessing to others and a channel of blessing to humanity. Every time we grab that opportunity to serve as the conduit of blessing to others, we are automatically blessed beyond whatsoever we may or might have sold into the lives of others, into other families, into other ministries. The opportunity is always there for us. It's always not to live for God in holiness and righteousness to God's glory. Is all, uh, the, the opportunity is always there for us to live for God's glory from time to time. The opportunity to be a born and a shining light in our generation. We are told in Matthew chapter 5, from verse 14, that ye are the light of the world, a city that is on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Listen to that. It giveth light unto all that is in the house. You are a channel of blessing in Jesus' name. So then, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The opportunity to serve God exceptionally, not just serving God, but to serve God exceptionally is always there for us. Look at Cain and Abel. Cain gave, Abel gave, but one gave more than the other. One gave just uh, nonchalantly. The other one gave out of the path of the cattle and God honor him. I pray that God will honor you and honor your gift and honor your blessing in Jesus' name. The opportunity is always there to be a blessing to someone, somewhere, somehow. The opportunity to prove the potency of God's power through evangelism, through conversion, through healing and through deliverance. These signs shall follow them that believe. There are a lot of signs that are made there for you and for me. The opportunity is knocking now. When trials and temptation come our way, it is an opportunity for us to be victorious in life. And I prophesy to somebody's life, you will be victorious in Jesus' name. When persecution and opposition comes, the grace to triumph is always there. Make use of that opportunity. Let it not pass you by. And you will enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Temptation will always be there. Trial will always be there. Uh, 
people will always want to stand on your way. Look at Mary of Alabaxa Box uh, when she did what she did. You see what uh, Judas Iscariot did? Judas actually was against it. And, um, but that did not stop Mary. Nothing will stop you in Jesus' name. No temptation is ever new that someone, somewhere, somehow has not been true. It is an opportunity to add your name to the heroes who through faith subdue kingdoms, quench the fiery dust of the enemy, stop the mouth of the lions, get bad at old age, and were untouchable by the fear, uh, fear, um, uh, fiery furnace of fire. By faith, Jordan and the Red Sea parted into two. The widow of Zaref uh, Zarephath avoided death because she believed God, she obeyed God. Money came out of the mouth of the fish because Peter believed and obeyed simple instruction. Go to the water, get the fish. And uh, because of faith, 5,000 people were fed at no cost. God is still in the business of working miracle. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. Hebrews chapter 11, I look at it from verse 32. And what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdom, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, took the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in flight, turned to flight the armies of the alien. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. Praise the Lord. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, uh, uh, they were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheep's clothing and ghost skin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, for you and for me, that they without us should not be made perfect. Opportunity always not. May we not miss our time of visitation in Jesus' name. God is calling you to give. God is calling me to give. And when we talk about sacrificial giving, what is it? Sacrificial giving is an act of killing an animal or a person or surrendering a possession as an offering to God or to a divine or supernatural figure. An animal, a person, or object offered in this way is called sacrifice. An act of giving up something of value for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy, like the uh, uh, the project that is going on at our World Conference Center right now, which is making the church to call on us that we should rise up to this uh, challenge, and God will use us in Jesus' name. I want to remind you that God will not send an angel from heaven to do the work. We must know it as our responsibility to sacrifice for the building to be completed. Remember, at the time of Ezra, a call was made. At the time of David, a call was made. At the time of Nehemiah, a call was made. And people gave willingly, sacrificially, and God was glorified. And um, we must all be prepared to make sacrifice. And the Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Sacrificial giving is an excellent unusual, uncommon, outstanding, 
painful and extraordinary giving that will cost you, that will cost me something to attract the attention of God. Amen. You give in such a way that God's attention is attracted. When Mary of Bethany gave, she drew attention. Unfortunately, there are people in our church that does not read their Bible very well. And when you take people to give openly, they are against this. They forgot when people gave. At the time of Nehemiah, we have record of them. When people gave, at the time of David, we have record of them. When the widow uh, that gave the last penny she had, we have the record of it. Look at the Bible all over. When you are giving to God, when you are building for God, everything.
having some uh, plead with us to be patient while we restore uh, the network with the Philippines. God bless you as you wait patiently. Praise the Lord. We're going to, while we pray, I just want us to understand that uh, uh, there's actually heavy downfall, uh, uh, downfall at Philippines, and so the network tripped off interimly, and they are doing their possible best to restore the network. But while we wait, we're going to spend some time to pray, and we know that everything will be all right in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, I want you to rise up on your feet. We're just going to pray. I want us at this moment to, we've had, uh, and this is not the final prayer, please be able to, uh, just want to pray while the pastor connects back with us. I want you to just commit what you have had to the Lord in prayer. Commit everything that you've had to God in prayer. Giving to prosper. Prosperity to sacrificial giving. You already much has been said. Much has been said. And you want to take that to the Lord in prayer. Pray that the Lord will begin to activate in your life the attribute of giving. I want you to pray that the Lord will begin to activate in your life the act the attribute of giving, the power to do it, the grace to do it. It takes will, it takes courage.